what's up everybody i just posted on my ig it's got all kinds of controversy already i'm kind of a controversial person adrian people are like i posted that i just bought dress barn 740 million dollar revenue company and people are like ah oh, good capitalist move gonna put all these companies out of store i'm like hey you don't you speak of what you don't know i bought a company that had already laid off thousands of employees and had already shut down the stores or had them contracted. So I'm bringing it back, baby. This ain't capitalism. This is just, this is the new world, the biggest opportunity in the new world. I'm going to tell you this, no matter how many people fuss and fight, the world moves on and you either change and you learn to adapt. The greatest probably single saying that you could live your life by is it's not the strongest or the smartest who survive. It's those most adaptable to the environment in which they find themselves. And we find ourselves in a world where most people are not adaptable and most people struggle. I don't care what your political policy is. Uncle Sam ain't going to save you. Big government ain't going to save you. I don't know what will save you. I don't have all the answers, but I can tell you a $1,000 a month check ain't going to change the world. What will change the world is you building skills, building a skill set. Skill sets are transferable across multiple Verticals. The world changes. You have real skill sets. They go right with you. You know, so ask yourself 2020 is coming right up. And uh, part of why I'm doing this, I'm in London right now. So it's one in the morning, two in the morning. And I want to call just because I wanted to say a couple things. Last year, I opened up Black Friday and I put my four top programs and I basically gave people $2,000 off. So many people wanted to get in, it was too short of a time. So I'm doing actually a pre-launch Black Friday. So I'm gonna put a link, you, you might see it. I'll talk about that later, but this is the official, it's Sunday at 9.01 on the East Coast, whatever, 1.30 or two in uh, London. And I'm opening this up because, listen to me, the transfer of power, wealth, assets is coming and now i'm gonna tell you this whether people like me or don't like all what i say i can promise you i'm always ahead of the curve people doing facebook ads now i was doing them in 2008 people doing google ads i was doing them in 2002 so listen to me i i'm not good at everything i'm not perfect i make big mistakes like everybody but i'm good at predicting trends and i'm telling you a trend right now Learn the four skills that I'm offering in this Black Friday, and I'm gonna talk about it now, this pre-Black Friday. So you're gonna learn e-com, credit, and not just credit, but also how to acquire capital. It takes money to make money, okay? That's not gonna change. I don't care if Bernie Sanders, Yang, doesn't matter who becomes president, this world, <laughs> there's systems that go behind the scenes that are much more powerful than any president and any government, let me tell you that. And the system that we have at hand now is a system of asset allocation. And what I mean by asset allocation is there's cash, but it's not just cash. There's things, like I'm in a hotel right here in London. If you own this hotel every single day, people get rooms in it and they charge for those rooms. And cash is deposited in the bank account. And if you owned this hotel or if you owned an Airbnb, now we're talking about real estate, another one of the four pillars uh, of really understanding the four pillars of this opportunity that's coming now there's the four pillars of the good life which is actually more important than money that's health wealth love happiness but inside the second pillar of the good life wealth there's four more pillars so there's e-com that's what i'm doing with dress barn we're making it an e-com play toys r us went bankrupt because they didn't know how to do e-commerce they only had big stores and not enough people want to go into stores amazon was eating their lunch so you can whine and say all the jobs were taken by the Toys R Us people, but that's kind of like yellow cab people saying that Uber took all their jobs. No, it didn't. You just switched. You're adaptable. You used to drive a taxi and now people drive Uber. And I'm sure there's downsides of Uber and there's downsides of, of uh, driving a yellow cab. I'm not saying that everything's perfect at Uber. I mean, I don't own Uber. I don't owe anything to Uber. But that's the second pillar. You got to understand e -com. The third pillar, as I said, you got to understand credit and how to get cal capital to do deals. And then lastly, um, you need to learn social media. I'm reaching you right now through social media. So you know these four things? 
I do not care what happens with the presidency. I don't care what happens in the world. You will be fine, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, you will go through trials and tribulations, but if you really want to have a crappy life, um, no, be, have no expertise in any of those four. And your life will continually be one of trial and tribulation financially. Okay? So, um, let's see some comments. Which hotel you at, bro? You know, I would say what hotel I'm at, but when I say that, all these people come and they're downstairs, like waiting in the lobby. So, I usually tell, I've stayed at many hotels in London. I've stayed at the Edition, I've stayed at Sea Containers, Mondrian, I've stayed at, there's lots of good ones. London, I love London, by the way. Someone said education is not always the answer. Well, like an Amish guy told me, Ty, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't always make it drink. You can send a boy to college, but you can't always make him think. So yeah, it's not so much about education and the per se, like I have a piece of paper and diploma. Look, I just did this deal. It took me three months to do it. Um, and I don't have a college degree and everybody I was doing business with had MBAs, but I ended up owning the asset. So don't worry about that, but you must know how to think. You must know how to think and you have to have specific skills. Like a lot of it, it's funny. It used to be not so much anymore that people thought I was just this Lamborghini guy. And um, you know that, that that's what made me, like I had no skills. I once did a big debate with a guy live. He's like, you have no skills. You just know how to do marketing. And I'm like, I'll tell you this. The more people, one of the best things you can learn in life, by the way, mindset tip for you, the more people rail against you, that becomes the fuel. You got to do it in a healthy way so you don't get bitter. And you just go, you know what? The more people talk, the more I do. Move in silence. If you've noticed, I've been much less on social media in the last three months because I've been doing stuff. And you pull out, this is one of the biggest business deals in the United, in the world in 2019. I mean, it's not the biggest business deal, but it's one of the bigger ones, especially in retail. So, um, move in silence. Let the results be, speak loud and clear for you. And just like a UFC fighter. Sometimes there's two UFC fighters. It's a little bit like Khabib. Khabib doesn't talk much, but at the end of the day, he chokes you out and puts you to sleep. You know? And, uh, yeah. Okay. Four pillars are asset allocation, e-com, social media, and credit. No, four pillars on the wealth creation side. One is e-commerce. People don't want to buy like they used to buy. Even this hotel has moved to an e-commerce model. If you remember a long time ago, hotels, you would just like check in and you would like, you know, they looked through like, a long time ago, they went through like five little note cards to see if they had reservations. Increasingly, everything's online. You can check in, check out connect to the internet, you can order food, you can see your receipts. It, there's businesses that are hybrid, but everything will be e-com. Your kids will be like, wow, there was a day where like, you had to check in the front desk of a hotel. Even that, even hotels will continually expand. Um, someone said, didn't I get LASIK? Yes, these are fake glasses because people don't always recognize me. Um, when I, and the doctor said it's good, I'm active. Like if somebody scratches, you don't want to get your LASIK eyes messed up. Someone said, you bulked up, brother. Just the camera, man. Just the camera. Um, I'm in a bulking phase right now. Again, health, wealth, love, happiness. One of the things I've learned, I've tried to collect the best set of mentors in the world in every single area of life. Health, you know, I've got mentors that are like Ben Greenfield. Uh, you may have seen him on Joe Rogan a couple times. One of the most in-shape guys in the world, has a great podcast. He's been giving me tips and mentorship for years. Um, Danny Hester is a guy who won Mr. Olympia. Uh, Dan Fine, pro, these are pro bodybuilder guys. My dad was a pro bodybuilder. I kind of like, I, you know, I have jujitsu guys that I've learned from, Machado's, the Gracie's, all that. So that's like part of my philosophy in life. That's what I was trying to say. It's not the smartest or the strongest. It's the most adaptable. The way you become adaptable is who you listen to. Some people don't agree with my philosophy. That's fine. Do whatever you want. I stick my head in the ground. All I can do is tell you what I'm doing and what works for me and what doesn't. If you got another way, then do it the other way. There's many ways, you know, to build a house. There's many ways to do stuff. I can't, people sometimes are like, yeah, but this person doesn't ever read a book and they're successful. And I'm like, yeah, well, Jeff Bezos became the richest man in the world selling books and he reads books. 
Bill Gates, the second richest man, swears by books and reads them. A book vacations, and his blog is all about books. The third richest man, Warren Buffett, reads eight hours a day. So what do you want to tell me? What do you want to argue about, man? The three big boys out there, they read. So if you want to bring up people who are making ten million that don't read, go for it. If that's your life philosophy, just do. I'm a head in the sand kind of guy. What I mean by that is, I just put my head in the sand. Let the people talk, let people argue about. Most people that argue, the time they argue, they don't do, you know? My philosophy, the core values of my Ty Lopez brand, if I brought that to you, I would say, I wanna help you find the good life. Each of those areas, health, wealth, love, happiness. Life is a game of juggling, you're juggling. But instead of two things, you're juggling four. And that's why life, it's not hard, but that's why life you gotta pay attention to what you're doing because it's very easy to get your wealth up. There's been times in my life, you can even look at some of my videos from the past where I was so focused on business that I couldn't work out at all and then your health goes down, you know? And then I know dudes that are in the greatest shape in the world but they can't pay their bills. And you got love, which is the social side, the social component, friends, family, romance, all those, those are tricky to balance. You gotta learn how to read people. You have to understand personality types you have to understand body language. You have to understand how to cut people. You got to understand negotiation. People is a compromise game. And then you, happiness is the final one. You got to understand how to meditate, how to become present. You also have to understand that, uh, you know, happiness is also an illusory game. The more you, it, happiness is like a cat. The more you chase it, the further it runs from you. So sometimes you got to learn to just let anxiety go down and you get the, that's my brand. That's what I, everything I do, I hope, that's what you understand is that it's not even balance. It is balance. It's more like juggling, you know, R Richard's entire mentorship has helped me so much. I can't wait till you get the five minute mentor finalized. Awesome. For those of you, we closed this new test group for the five minute mentor, two years of my training, daily five minute videos, plus two months of live training. I did the first one for those of you who got in. Congratulations. For those of you who missed it, um, you definitely want to get in this pre Black Friday thing. You know, I haven't been, sometimes people are like, oh, Ty, are you selling? Well, I haven't even been online. I haven't sold anything on my live calls for months. I've been doing other stuff, you know? I'll tell you, when people are given advice, be careful of block, you know, Kevin Hart once told me, he's, he's not a close friend, but I've had some interesting conversations, um, and he, he once told me people block their blessings. You know, he's now one of the, most followed comedians, for sure he's the most followed comedian in the world. I mean, he's got 60, 70 million Instagram followers. He's very wealthy. He's great shape physically now. He had a car accident, but he's recovering. I know I'm good friends with Chris Paul and they're best friends and he's got a cool social circle, but he told me, you know, you ask yourself like, why does Kevin Hart have that? And why are most people suffering in the world? Well, I don't have all the answers, but I can tell you that a lot of it is people block their blessings. Sometimes I've brought ideas to people. I'm like, hey, start a social media agency in 2016. A lot of the world gave me shit. They're like, ah, this dude rented a Lamborghini. Which I didn't, but even if I did, who cares? Judge the ideas on the merit that come out of the person's mouth. All humans are fallible. I never rented a Lamborghini. But if I did, I wouldn't care. Shit, when I was growing up, if I met somebody who even drove a Lamborghini for five minutes, I'd be like, I gotta listen to this dude. I wouldn't care if it was least did I wouldn't care with the matchbox Lamborghini I'm like what does this person know if you watch that Will Smith one of the greatest movies Will Smith came out um, with Jaden uh, who I've gotten to know a little bit Jaden Smith it, when his son was real young he said he um, what's the movie called that the one where he was pursuit of happiness about? pursuit of happiness one of the great movies of all time of the last 20 years it's a great movie and um, he goes he meets this guy who has a Porsche outside, and he goes, you know, I don't remember the exact words, but he basically says, what do you do, and how can I learn from it? One of the problems in the modern world that I'm concerned about is now you have this attack on successful people happening in the mass media. Well, who do we want to emulate? You know, think about it. The Rock is a quote-unquote, his body, if you look at it, the size, the stature, the muscle mass. And I met him, and I, I was on the set with him, Fast and Furious last year in London here, almost exactly a year ago. Very interesting. I spent half a day with him and Statham and 
And one of the things that I noticed about The Rock, The Rock's bigger in person, not taller in person than you would think, but he's bigger. I mean, he's got wrists, probably 10 inch wrists. He's a massive, so what's wrong with looking up to somebody who's massive? If you're in a gym working out or you're trying to get, lose weight, get in shape, I want to have a role model that just blows my mind and so far ahead of me and I'll never reach it. You want to have role models, you want to have people you're pursuing. I try to have goals that I know I'll never achieve. I'll never achieve what, you know, in business, what, I don't know, Elon Musk did by this time or what Mark Cuban did or what, I mean, these people are people I look up to. So be very careful you don't block your blessing in the sense that you are um, instantly averse to new concepts that come in your head. And it's interesting, like when I post it, just a few minutes ago, I posted about buying Dress Barn on my Instagram. A lot of good comments and congratulations. Some people are like, ah, oh, well, oh, you're, you're capitalism. Good job. You cut 30,000 employees and cut shut down 650 stores. I said, no, I bought the asset, Dress Barn, after they cut those employees. It wasn't 30,000. They had already done it. I'm coming in to save the day and I'm hiring new people. So people have it backwards. That's blocking your blessing. Instead of people understanding the deal so they could learn how to do deals like that. Because I can tell you, I'm working on big deals. If you're a beginner entrepreneur, I wouldn't recommend starting on these. These are big deals. You know, these are deals that you have to have a little sophistication. But what you can do is start. Do you know how much you can? There's company. I just had, had lunch uh, with a guy. Sorry, dinner with a guy. My time zone's all messed up in London. And he, uh, he just bought a pizza franchise. He didn't use any of his own money. They have a, they're in the South, in the US. They've got, I don't know, 39 pizza restaurants. He bought it with none of his own money. He understood how to get other investors and he got a piece of it for free, for free. Because he understands credit, he understands how to read people, he understands deal making. Those are smaller deals. It was a company that was doing like 19 million in revenue. But that sounds intimidating to you. But I, if you guys continue to watch here, um, I will be showing you, someone said, thought you got LASIK fake. <laughs> Shane Walters, this is a perfect example of blocking his blessing. So he comes on this podcast, it doesn't even bother me by the way, just, I've been through the social media thing for so many years, I don't get phased by comments, but I get, I'm like flabbergasted, I'm like, people, first of all, these are fake lenses, just so you know, there's no, there's nothing there. Um, and I wear them just because they have a, after LASIK for about six months, these have like a light kind of sensitivity protection. And, uh, but anyway, he blo he's blocking his blessing. I'm talking about, I will show some of you as best I can how to buy an existing business that's operating in the old world, not in the new big opportunity. And some of you pick up a $2 million company, you can buy it for $20,000 sometimes, or zero of your own money if you know how to collect capital from other people. And all of a sudden, something that would have taken you 20 years to build, 10 years to build, you can have in 10 months. Now, I'm not saying it's all, you don't, you gotta then operate it, but the point being, I wanna show you guys, this is, we're going into 2020, I've been training people on a lot of things, and it's time for me to continue to train you in a much more advanced way as I continue to do more advanced things. That's my core, value on this live call and in my Ty Lopez brand. I have different brands that I own. You know what I'm saying? So with this brand, people go, what is Ty Lopez? It's like, I'm out here trying to show people all the stuff they should have taught us in school that I had to go through life learning slowly but surely. How long did the dress barn deal take? Long. I mean, not that long, three, four months. These bigger deals are more complicated. You end up having two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in legal costs, so that's why I said you, you cannot start with this deal. For those of you who are beginners, you might, you know, you should just work around deal makers, people. But the future is assets are changing. Toys R Us was run by an old school company that didn't understand the internet like Amazon did. And they, Toys R Us, one of the biggest brands, everybody knows Toys R Us in America, from young to old. And all of a sudden it just, you go to Toys R Us website now, it's like you don't even, you can't even buy one toy on there. You can't even buy a box of Legos, <laughs> Adrian. You can't even buy a crayon. God damn it. There's nothing. I don't even know how you have recreation anymore, Adrian. 
<laughs> so that's an opportunity. I wish I should have bought Toys R Us at the very end. Another a private equity guy bought it. And you say, oh, that's impossible to do. Google this. $100,000 Beverly Hills real estate. Three months ago, a property that was for sale for a billion dollars, the guy who owned it went broke, did a bankruptcy sale, and somebody bought it for $100,000. You see? And previously it had been purchased for $250 million. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to prepare you. But the reason I'm doing this Black Friday thing early is that you got to have the skills. You have to have the skills because you can't just, these assets are going to be sitting here. These companies are going to be sitting here for sale or some of them almost giving them away. But my, the biggest problem is I need, I, there's not enough people in the world who knows how to do them, run them. I mean, imagine somebody just, if you had the skills to be one of the people who takes over Toys R Us. It's not that hard. It's not as hard as you think. If you understand social media, if you understand e-com, e even real estate side. Toys R Us didn't understand real estate. They didn't understand the trends in real estate, that the traffic of people walking into a Toys R Us store had been dropping. So the lease price of the Toys R Us warehouse, they kind of had these big stores, you couldn't pay the rent. So that's real estate. So, um, let me put a, I'm going to put a link because I'm, it's two in the morning here. I just wanted to pop in while I'm here and announce this. Can you get me the, get me the link? But 2020 is here, a new decade. Now the last decade. It's the bottom one. Black Friday for it. Okay. So I just want to, we're going to announce this. This is going to be done after Black Friday. So get in. I want to see who's going to be the first person. I'm going to read off their name. So you just go to tylopez.com slash Black Friday 4. You're going to save over two grand. If you wait till December to get all that training, it's going to be an extra $2,000. So I'm trying to make this dirt cheap. I don't like to set it to $1 because it's not fair. And I don't do stuff that's not fair. I don't care what anyone says. People can yabber and get mad all they want. I'm like, hey, if people spend 10 Gs, 20 Gs a year for college, they can drop 497 for literally more practical training than you'll get in the whole four years. I was just talking with somebody here in, in uh, London. I had dinner with some people. And she's she, she moved here from another country. She's in London. I said, why'd you move? Pursue my dream. I said, what's your dream? She said, start a fashion brand. I said, oh, you designing clothes? She goes, yeah, I'm a design clothes. I said, have you done it? She goes, no, I don't know how to design. I said, but I thought you told me you went to college earlier in the conversation. She said, I did. So what'd you go for? Economics. Well, hell, economics not a real damn degree. Come on now. All you took economics in school, first of all, economics is the most controversial. There's a lot of hyper-intelligent Nobel Prize winners that think economics as it's taught is a bunch of malarkey. So she dropped four years of her life, didn't actually learn what she wanted to do, and I'm just going, what's wrong with the world, man? What is wrong with the world? Where's your Lamborghini? It's right here. I keep it in the living room of this hotel. Just drive it up the stairs and put it in right here. Adrian, can you can you roll it by in the back? Vroom, 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 vroom. There you go. <laughs> Do the sound of vroom, it. Vroom. For all the people who are like, you never had a Lamborghini. I'm going to start. You know what you should do is one of like, if you scale back real small, I could always keep a little um, Lego. I mean, not a Lego. Oh, what are those? Hot Wheels? Lamborghini? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. You wanted my Lamborghini? Hold on. Oh, wait. Let me not show this. <laughs> okay. Um... Ty, let me get a 10K loan, Ty Lopez. So here's the thing, you gotta learn how to get that capital. It's got, generally needs to come from people that you know, or your social circle. You can try to get 10 grand online. I've given a lot of money away and things and that, but I'm saying, this is a problem. Um, give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a person to fish, feed him for a lifetime. You gotta learn how to fish. 
Okay. Mark Lapp says again, I already answered that. Ty, when's the Black Friday bundle coming out and what does it consist of? Go right here. TyLopez.com slash Black Friday 4. Oh, let me pull out my phone. I gotta get some food, man. I gotta get some. It's already 2.20 in the morning. I'm out here working for you, hopefully adding some value to your life. Um, I don't even know if we put this out. Oh, here's somebody already. Yeah, so you can buy all four programs, but if you don't have all four, you can just buy one. If you already have some of them, you can just buy one. So here's the first person, Richard Bartlett, Atlanta, Georgia, just bought off the live call. Richard Bartlett, what is up, my friend? Welcome to, you're the first person who got in the pre-Black Friday. It's been a year since I did that. Anyone confused? Anyone confused? How did you used imagine 2020 would be like? I, I'll tell you this, 2020 is gonna be a superb decade starting 2020 for some of you. And just be honest, it's gonna be a hell on earth for some of you. So just remember that. Life forks down two roads. And um, be careful, don't tempt fate, because fate has a way of going down the hell on earth. A lot of people live on hell on earth. Sometimes it's of other people's fault that it's you live hell on earth, and sometimes it's your own fault. It, but you know it doesn't matter, because it's still your life. You get one damn chance. So 2020, all I can tell you is stack up on what you're learning and what you're training in. Deliberate training, step by step. Every day you go, I'm gonna set four o'clock, in the afternoon to 4.30 and here's what I'm gonna learn. Every day I'm gonna wake up at five in the morning, I'm gonna spend 15 minutes training. You can now do that right from your home. These programs, and there's other programs in YouTube and all that, you can live. When I would just flew here, seven hour flight from New York, or, or I would actually went from Washington DC from near my farm here to London, I was reading, reading stories of leadership, reading about Valley Forge, George Washington versus the British, Very, and it had a lot of, it had the Roman army, uh, lessons from Hannibal, not Hannibal Lecter, the real Hannibal, the general. Um, so it's important to put in the time every day on a consistent basis. And you, those of you who do that in 2020, it's a beginning on heaven on earth. And that's my hope. I really wish every single person on there that this invest next decade would be their best, but let's be real. Some people um, are going to block their blessing, walk down the wrong path. Sometimes it'll take you a decade to unwind. And that's, I tell you, if you could ever curse your enemy, you curse them with this. I hope you make a wrong choice that takes you a decade of your life to unravel. Think about that. Decade, you don't get, think of the, the prime of human life. You're not at your prime at five years old. You're, my grandma's 101. She says, don't get old. That's what she told me. So you, you got these, it's like bookcases. The end, these two extremes in the human existence are not your prime. You got this narrow set of decades. You waste a decade of them, it's like, psh. even Bill Gates was asked when he was the richest man in the world. He was 60 years old. And they said, would you give all your money back? Would you give all your money back to be 50 years old? And he said, nope. He said, would you give all your money away? to be 40 years old, 20 years, he said, in a heartbeat. What I'm saying is, even a man with over close to 100 billion at the time, he would give it all away to not have wasted time. And that's a very profound thought. People don't think about that enough. So I see people that argue against my life philosophy. They're like, you don't need books, just go out and do it. Yes, it will take you 10 years longer than it should. You don't need mentors. Yes, and it, you will succeed 10 years longer, uh, 10 years slower than you should have. There is, and that is part of the core value of kind of any system that you get on my website, Ty Lopez. It's like, how do we cut the learning curve? Of course you can become successful without ever reading a book. Of course you can never have a mentor. But trial and error is very slow and very painful. You could figure out how to fix your own broken arm if you wanted to. 
you break it and you put the raw, you put, oh, I'm gonna put Vaseline on it. Let's see what that does, okay? It doesn't heal right. You'll break it again. I mean, eventually you can die from infection, but you got two arms, so you break the other one. You know what's better? You know what I do? Where's somebody who's got 20 years experience fixing broken arms? I go to them and I'm like, help me. And that thought is like profound when it comes to life. I ask people, and, and look, there's people who make more money than me. There are people who, whatever. But there's very few people that I envy their life. Very few people. In fact, there's probably not one person you can name that I would trade. I'm not saying I have the best life. I'm just saying when I think about their life, oh yeah, they got more money than me, but they're, but they're 65. Okay. Oh, well, I don't want to be... That's, I don't want that. Oh, but they're out of shape. They couldn't freaking go one round in a boxing ring. I don't want that. But, you know, there's so many, oh, they have hyper anxiety. I don't want that. You can keep it. There are people that I look up to that I envy, but you need people in your life that you have a healthy, positive envy towards. And we live in a world where it's just I look around and I'm just like, right, who do I want to be? And there are a few people. There's a handful of people I look at their life and go, Phew. like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That dude figured out life. Now, he wasn't perfect. But to me, I mean, the man, he's a man who set goals and hit every one of them. He wanted to come to America. He hit it. He wanted to be a millionaire before 30. He hit it buying real estate in Santa Monica and doing mail order business. Before e -com, he was mailing weights, similar to e -com with the catalog system in the back of magazines. So he hit that. He hit hell. He's got a cool family. I know his son, Patrick. He raised cool, Patrick's one of the coolest kids I know in Hollywood. And he, so he got health, wealth, he's almost a billionaire. Love, happiness. I mean, I don't know Arnold well, but I've had some interesting conversations with him in his house. And seems to be a pretty happy dude to me. Everything he tried to do, his major life goals, he wanted to be governor, he wanted to have the highest power political position he could in the United States, he pulled it off. Governor of California, he couldn't be the president because he was born in Europe, but um, California's the largest state, largest economy in the U.S., and he ran it for eight years as the governor. And he wanted to marry a Kennedy, and he married a Kennedy. I like that. I'm going, you know what will make each person here happy if you actually pull off the stuff that you dream about? Everybody dreams about it. Like I said, this, this woman, she was dreaming about starting a fashion brand, uh, designing her own fashion brand. I don't want to design, but I'm going... She does. So she has to find people that she envies and she would trade her life for. And I'm telling you, in this game called life, there's a lot of people who talk big and there's a lot of people who do this. Very few people that I envy. That I know wealthy people. I know, I, I know people that are, you know, in the top 10 wealthiest people in the world. And I don't envy them. I know people who are a little less wealthy and I envy them. So it's not just, that's why I said, you can't just pick one target and go, oh, health. I know people that can bench press five, six, seven hundred pounds, but I don't like their life. For me, it would be a loss to live the life that they have. They might be winning in their mind, which is fun. It's a subjective thing. You're, you're basically playing a game against your own mind. Every person here is playing. It's almost like, you know, the matrix, blue pill, red pill. There's a lot of truth to that. You just wake up. Life is very illusory. It's very good chance some of the smartest people believe in multi-dimensional realities, whether it's Elon Musk, Stephen Hawking, multi-universe theory. I, I'm not going to get too far into it, but I will say that you basically are playing this video game against yourself. And, and, and characters are getting dropped into it. And, and the environment changes, like the recession, there's Trump, there's this, and people get all bent out of shape. They're like, Trump's the president. The world's ending. And I remember when Obama was the president, all the people didn't like Obama. It was the worst president ever. And then before that, Bill Clinton, it's just, so you're playing this video game where really all that matters to you inside your brain is that you like your life, right? So you're like, and then part of the game is to inject this distraction. It's like, oh, you got a new president. Well, you watch the news enough, there's always a distraction. In fact, you can be sure that the world will end tomorrow. How many times have they predicted the world's going to end? And I'm not saying there's not environmental damage. I, I own farms, there's environmental damage. I'm not saying there's not global climate change. There's all, all those things can be happening, but that's not the game you're playing. It's a very individualized game. You're born alone, you die alone. You ask people who die, you don't die in a kumbaya group. 
Everybody faces their death, their maker, um, one-on-one. And you come into the world one-on-one. Even if you're a twin, you come in, like Dwight Schrute said in the office, he's like, when I was born, they found that I had eaten the fetus next to me. Do you remember that? He's like, I grew into a bigger, stronger person. (laughs) Um, So you play that video game, and what I'm telling you is inside that video game, there's rules of how it works. And the rules change, so it's like a dynamic game. It's like a very advanced video game. That's this thing we call life. And um, in it, there's there's things like regret you have to deal. So like regret comes in and you go, oh, I should have already gotten past that phase of the video game, but I'm behind. And so regret comes in and becomes fuel to push you forward and things like that. But it's still a distraction because the regret is the past is gone. So really only the present's a reality. The future is a, a dream. The past is like a ghost that haunts you and you just have reality. So in the game, once again, you have the distractions that pull you away and then you come back to it. Done. But what I will tell you is for whatever reason, whoever made this video game, whether it be God or whatever you believe, I don't like to touch on those subjects because there's a lot of semantics and everybody's kind of saying similar things, but getting mad at each other. What I'm saying is in that game, I can promise you this. There are four main elements you have to navigate in that game for the subjective reality. And it is subjective. Okay. But you still want subjective happiness. Because the opposite is objective pain. So I'd rather be a madman. In fact, some of the greatest thinkers of all time, Nietzsche was one of the great thinkers of all time, for sure. The German philosopher. And he went insane. At the end, they found him you know, dancing with a horse. But I can't say that somebody who works at Walmart sane is subjectively any happier than him. He was probably happy when he was dancing with a horse. I'd rather be a crazy Nietzsche than a depressed worker. And I'm not making fun of you if you work at fast food. I'm saying you got to get past that fast food. That got to be a phase in your life that you look back and you go, oh, I had to work at a fast food place. But then I built my skills. So you're in the video game. Distractions are being thrown at you. The object of the game is subjective happiness. Okay, which differs from people. For me, I'm subjectively happy when I travel a lot. My business partner, Alex, he does not like to travel. You see me traveling every week, he likes to stay in one place. So we have subject, our, every video game has a different subjective goal. My subjective goal is my version of happiness. So how do I get there? Well, you have tools, like if you, watch, if you play Call of Duty or any video game, you have like weapons and it's like, this is the tool that I use for this point, this is the tool I use for this point. You know, I got the shotgun when I'm inside the house. Whatever. If you're building the old sim game, you're building the house, you have a hammer. So, so you need four core tools. And those are the tools that help with health, wealth, love, and happiness. So you're moving through this game, reaching subjective. And there's like you're walking. It's almost like you have eight legs. And you're walking tired. It's four path. You're not even a human being in this video game I'm talking about. You're like a multidimensional creature. And you know why people aren't happy? It's because you can't play a multi-dimensional game with one dimension. That's why celebrities who have wealth, they got, they got celebrity status, they're the most fucked up people in rehab and depressed and all that. Because in their subjective, they forgot they, there's eight legs. You've got to be walking down that wealth one, the celebrity side, but you also have to keep your health up. You can't just become a crackhead like a lot of people become and you see famous people die of heroin and this and that and you see great artists pass away quickly look at elvis one of the greatest artists look at prince because they didn't walk down the game right so they were winning in that video game moving towards the goal but there's four paths and there are eight legs only like two were walking forward and two were going backwards then you lose the game it's a weird game this is weird some of you will not understand what I'm talking about. And some like this guy, Andy Scheinberg goes, Ty, I already know all this. Okay, Andy, you are the enlightened being. I will, well, let's call Andy Scheinberg is the inventor of the game. He is God. He understands everything I'm saying. And um, so you move through this game into, this is my version. Andy Scheinberg has an alternate God-like understanding of life, but you're moving down these, but how do you move down? Well, every one of those paths with two legs, eight legs, you need like a different set of shoes. 
one's rocky, one's sandy, one's muddy, and you know, one's concrete. You need different tools. And those tools, so now you got eight sets, eight feet, and now the game's getting more complicated. And so what do you see in the world now? You see people falling off. They're winning in this. They're winning in that, and then they start falling off because they only have six of the shoes on the eight shoes you need in this video game called Planet Earth. And so as you do that, <laughs> six shoes don't make you, you don't win. You don't re achieve subjective happiness. And make no mistake, the goal of all humans is happiness. Some people pursue it through cruelty, dictators, but they're doing it for the same reason that people give to charity, deep down in their own demented way. Hitler felt he was doing the bidding of God. He was demented. That's why I said it's subjective reality. In his mind, it was like, it was like we were cleansing and creating the massive error, mass, you know, Aryan race. That's what he thought, and he thought he was doing God's work. Um, so, by the way, that brings up another thing. You've got to make sure that your subjective, or your objective and subjective reality are not distorted by traumas. And so this game of life, that's why you, sometimes people hear me, they're like, Ty, give me the easy answer in life. And I'm like, it ain't easy. This, is, this video game going to take attention. Somebody said, Ty, why are only 500 people, you have 3 million followers? I'm like, because most people can't handle this conversation. Most people are going to go watch some stupid Instagram live. And I, I'm not bad talking to the other one, but this is not a subject that most humans are going to spend much time talking on. Come on now. Most people want to be entertained. Like uh, what the opiate of the masses. <sighs> That's what people want to do. They want to smoke. They want to relax. It's like sports. I like sports, but it's the opiate of the masses. Even though I think it's fine to like to watch sports, I still understand that it dulls your senses, and that's fine. And so does everything. And people smoke weed. Nothing wrong with smoking weed if you do it in a logical way. I mean, in a common sense way. But if you take it too far, now you dull reality and you begin to distort what you're doing as you walk through life. So that's a whole other element. I don't even have time <laughs> to talk about that because that's the the distortion element is a whole other one. But the simple takeaway for those of you who either knew everything I already talked about or felt lost is that you must collect the tools as you walk towards subjective happiness. And what I was saying is the problem in the schools. And what I stand, one of my values that I stand against is an institutional system, i.e. formalized education, even though some formalized education would be okay. Universities, even though some university training is okay and is productive, but this, but just blanket thinking that that moves you through life is the biggest scam. You know, Donald Trump says the impeachment's the biggest scam. Well, no, it, it didn't hold a candle to the scam that it goes on among eight billion people almost now. Just think about it. People are suffering physically, financially. They're lonely, they're anxious, they're not happy. So what is the point of life? You know, you know how many people think about suicide all the time? A lot of people. So what I, and they don't, most people don't go through with it, but that's a thought in many people's minds. Probably a good percentage of people watching here. So what I'm telling you is that the practical answer, I gave you a lot of abstract theory. Now I'm giving you the practice. I will bet against anybody who thinks the way to win the game is just to walk down it and learn it on your own. You will have to learn it and absorb it, but it does not have to come from only your life experience, as Warren Buffett says. You only learn through mistakes, but there's no rule they have to be your own. You can learn from other people's mistakes. I've never put my head in a fire because when I was a little kid, my mom's like, don't put your head in a fire and it'll hurt. And I didn't have to go, but mom, I don't believe in learning from other people. I just learn on my own. And I put my head in there now enough. So for those of you who are going into 2020 and your plan of action is like, yo, God, what's my plan of action? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to grind and my life's going to get better. No, grinding is a small component. It is a necessary component. It ain't gonna work. I love all the people. I love all the entrepreneurs that are working hard. 
and not smart. Because I tell Alex, Alex, we work hard and smart, we're going to smoke everybody. Can't just work hard. Can't just grind. Can't just go, wow, put your head down and just do it. Do what? How'd you like to build, how'd you like your house built by a dude who never built a house? And he just said, he got advice, just wake up early and start building a house. And you don't know how to build a house. Don't read, don't look at blueprints. Don't talk to a general contractor that has 20 years experience. Build that damn house yourself. It's going to be awesome. No, it's not. It's going to be a piece of crap. Be the worst house. Anybody's there, it won't even meet code. That thing will fall down. You guys see the Hard Rock Hotel fall down in Louisiana? It just looks like last month. Hard Rock Hotel fell down while they were building it. Somebody heads roll. That was probably built by somebody who didn't believe <laughs> in the core philosophy that I'm saying I believe in. So, Ty, what's the solution? Buy an online course. One of many. There is no one solution. That's like, how do you get in shape? If somebody says, dumbbell curls. That's it. Dumbbell curls. Well, that'd be kind of stupid because there's many ways. If you want to build biceps, there's a lot of exercise. In fact, a lot of the best bicep exercises, you don't even work out the biceps. Deadlifts build biceps. Chin-ups build biceps. A lot of the back exercises, a lot of the squat, I mean, if you're doing, you know, Romanians. So the point being is, I'm not coming here saying, here's a life philosophy and my solution is for you to buy courses. But you'd be a fool to want to build biceps and say, curls have no part in it. Because as they say, curls are for girls. So you'd also be a fool to say that in the modern world, you don't want to learn from online courses. Think of why online courses are superior to offline courses. Even books that I love and textbooks that I read, they are updated every two years, three years. I love Tim Ferriss's stuff. I was reading, like somebody had a, you know, it's four hour work week book and I'm reading it and I'm going, wow, this was great advice in 08. It was like great, it's like the software he's telling you to use. It's like, ooh, you can sync your computers. For, I'm like, that was before cloud computing. I'm going, this book's outdated. So yeah, you can just do books, but books have pros and cons. College. Oh man, I've been to college. Teaching. I've been to Harvard and taught. I've been to uh, Yale. I've been, I've been, I was here at London uh, School of Economics, one of the, uh, I think it's no, LBS, uh, London Business. One of the London ones. It's like number two business school in the world. These people are learning outdated stuff. I was going, whoa. So online courses are agile. They're agile. If I got a video in one of my courses, like my Facebook training, and also those Facebook ads that training doesn't work, I pull them out. There's no other way to do that. Because college professors learn slow. They got a curriculum that they set up at the beginning of the year, and they're going to just teach it. No, 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 they're teaching. I love it. I tell Alex, the more people that don't listen to what I'm talking about in my Ty Lopez brand, the more we're just buying up assets. You know how many people showed up at this $740 million revenue company to buy it? Three. Three. Me, me and Alex, two others. I like that. I like those odds. You can win when only three people out of 330 million people, it was a global sale, anybody could buy it. Out of 7.9 billion people, three people showed up. I like those odds. So all of you who are just like, yo, this is not, I do not agree with you, good. Because I'm doing it, and it works. Before I bought this, I'll give you an example. It's a practical thing on mentoring. <clears throat> Before I bought Dress Barn, very complex deal, Tillman Fertitta was at my house. Worth five five billion dollars. He just came out on the Forbes list, four point nine or five billion. He owns the largest restaurant owner in the world. He owns the Houston Rockets basketball team. And I was talking to him, getting advice on how to do this dress barn deal. That's my competitive advantage that I have. Those other three, pe those other two people that were bidding against me, they didn't have a billionaire teaching them. And it's not just that he's a billionaire; it's that he does distressed asset deals. So I learned from a master. You know, you want to learn how to box? You want to be defensive on boxing? Learn from Floyd Mayweather because he's the greatest defensive boxer. Him and probably Muhammad Ali. And uh, the other day, I, I, if you saw my social media, I took Floyd Mayweather to the Lakers game. And I was talking to him about what? Two things. Business. People understand. Floyd Mayweather is a sharp businessman. 
And I was talking to him about working out. What does he do? What's his strategy? So I'm in that mode. And anytime people go, oh, you don't need that. You just go in the gym and you just work out till you hurt yourself. <laughs> and you never build muscle. I'm like, good. Go do that. But in this game called wealth, small percentage of you. I'm happy for it to be a small percentage of you. I'll teach you what I know. I don't know everything, but I can teach you what I know. And I can bring in the people that I learn from to teach you what they know and what they've taught me. So for those of you who are, you know, hate the ideas of, of online courses and stuff, and you think that I'm just, this whole talk is to funnel you precisely like I'm a freaking master magician into buying my stuff, not even the main part of my income. It becomes smaller and smaller every day. I become a more objective person telling you to do these things. In fact, it's funny, in the last three meals, I was just like not doing much with my Ty Lopez brand and courses, like, because I was working on his other big deals. And I was talking to Maya, my cousin, I said, you know what? I feel like it's like a lose-lose. My revenue went down on Ty Lopez, so I went up in other places, but but also people aren't getting this stuff. I look at the testimonials that pour into my Instagram DMs and YouTube and people posting success stories, then there's less of them. So I'm just going, is this really better? Live, I wanna live in a win-win situation, a win-win reality, so. Uh, let's see, my 13-year-old son just told me your buddy is alive. I don't even, do I have a buddy that's dead? Adrian, was there a rumor of one of my buddies being dead? Let me take some Q&A. Tylopens.com slash Black Friday 4. You can get my top, I think it's either four or six programs, $2,000 off, or you can just buy them one off at a discount. Black Friday begins today, Sunday. All right. What was that question? Let me take some, you want to read some questions? Gerson Apayono, welcome to the program. In Utrecht, Netherlands. Raymond <clears throat> in Hollywood, Florida. Why do they have to have a Hollywood, Florida and a Hollywood, California? Can't they come and be more creative? What kind of content is taught in the courses? What's on, there's more content in that you can spend all of 2020 going through the content. There's, let's say, 100 hours of training. You should spend 10, 15 minutes a day. So if you divvy that up, you're not even going to get through it. Okay? Hmm because people are jaded by all the lies online. Yeah, let people be jaded, baby. I love it. Everybody who tries to do a business deal and fails, then when the real good deal comes, instead of being introspective and go, maybe I failed because it's me, they blame all deals and then there's more for the people who aren't jaded. Every person who goes, shoot, I blah, 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 I got burned, well, good, good. That's how the game goes. That's part of the game, and people don't like to hear the game, that the game has a competition element, but the game of life has a competition element. I promise you. I don't care. I, You know, some socialism has worked in some places. You see it in Sweden and things. And so leveling the playing field at a certain... But if, if Sweden has more billionaires per capita than anywhere in the world. So I don't think... It, it, it's not a socialist issue there, Kevin. Okay? So... What I'm saying is there is a competitive element that must be left in the world. And even in pure communistic countries and socialistic ones, they're still competitive. So you have to be a little competitive in that video game where you're walking. You also got to pay attention to the people who are in their video game moving next to you. It does matter. It does matter, man. Ty, why do you want to make your students rich? I don't want to make all my students rich. It's not the goal. The goal, the values of my brand is financial independence which is different. I have people, you know, I, <clears throat> I spoke at Grant Cardone's 10X in February and in Miami had a lot of people there, it was great. And a girl came up to me when I was walking off stage, said, Ty, I wanna to talk to you. She told me her story. In India, she got went to one of the best colleges, came out, average jobs $500 a month. She took my program on e-com, she was doing drop shipping and other, there's different elements of e-com and she's making $4,000 a month. And she said, Ty, it's changed my life. I bought a ticket, I could fly all the way without having to ask my parents for money to Miami and back to India. And so that's financial independence. She's not, she's not rich. It's not realistic that everybody's gonna have the same 
Not everybody's going to be Tillman Fertitta. Not everybody's going to be Jeff Bez. You wouldn't even want a world where everybody's trying to be billionaires. We need people who are artists. But even artists need to have financial independence. Some of the great artists like Beethoven was always broke and unhappy. You don't want to always be unhappy. A lot of artists would do better if in their lifetime they could get reward. In general, to be an artist, you have to die. Then people, it's like Biggie. Everybody loves Biggie. Now he's dead. You know? People become icons after they're dead, especially in, in art. You see that a lot. So everybody should learn this, but not everybody needs to be rich, rich. But I don't think everybody should be poor, poor. And I, I agree. Look, I don't agree with Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren and socialism. But what I do agree is that everybody, I, just, I want to get to the same place as everybody where nobody's dying because they can't go to the doctor. While nobody's living in a hut uh, with dirty water while other people live in a mansion. I'm, I don't want that. But I'm trying to get there in a different way. You can't, if you took all the money from Bill Gates, 100 billion, and you took it from Jeff Bezos, 200 billion, you just took it all away, and you just repossessed it all, uh, there wouldn't be enough to even put a dent this big on global poverty. That's a myth. It's a myth. You need trillions and trillions of dollars to, to there's half, half the world objectively poor, so you got three and a half billion people, okay? So you're not gonna get them out of poverty and fix the whole situation with a thousand bucks. I wish you could, it would help, but no. So, Ty, can you afford a Lamborghini giveaway? <laughs> I thought of doing one of those. The problem, the reason I don't do a Lamborghini giveaway, because who, when I give it to people, you know how much insurance is? My auto insurance at the peak, it's not so much anymore, was $6,000 a month. So, you want $6,000 a month insurance? All right, couple Rolls Royce, couple, uh, couple Lamborghinis, Ferrari, <coughs> Maserati, it's too expensive. So, Wikipedia doesn't know you. That is good. You know, I've gone down the becoming well. I know some of you are on that path of wanting to get your social media up. I do not. I do not want to have 100 million followers. So just go on past me. <laughs> just go on past me. Just go on. All you do follower counters, just go. I got enough to do what I want to do. I stick my head in the sand. You want to pursue 50 million followers? Go on past me. Good luck, buddy. I already been there, done that. <laughs> That's another Dwight Truth thing. When uh, one of them wants to date, like the girl that Dwight used to date, the little I forgot. chick. He goes, he goes, I've been there, done that. I've been there and done that, my friend. Have it. That's how we ever get into music. Yeah, I like music. Um, let's see. I'm going to wrap up here in a few minutes. SEO versus SMMA. I mean, they're somewhat similar. SEO is just a different angle you can bring to an SMMA. Two minutes on Instagram. Oh, two minutes on Instagram. Good. I'm about to be gone. Tylopez.com slash Black Friday 4. Announcing this. But once Black Friday hit, it's done. Okay. Speed round of questions. I'm going to answer any question. Let me look at Facebook. I got two minutes. Can I work for you? Mm, maybe, but probably not. Because... I'm trying to get smaller with my business and not bigger. Best advice for a teenager, become massively adaptable and have a set routine of training yourself every day in practical skills. I'm an artist, it's hard to make money. Yes, if you don't think outside the box. So the person who started Etsy makes money with art, but the person who just is not adaptable and is still trying to do things the outdated way, sadly, and I can't fix it, that you struggle. Dropshipping's still a thing, somewhat, but there's other things above and beyond that. Ty, have Grant Bradley and launch on my podcast. One of these days, I get a lot of podcast requests. Don't take it personally if I don't do it. Uh, it's just, I'm traveling a lot and I got, I'm doing, I'm trying to, mostly I'm buying assets that are doing over five to 700 million in revenue. So, I haven't always been in that phase in life, but it makes me more busy. Ty, can I do it outside the nine to five hours? Yes, part time, absolutely. Ty, should do some music mentorships. Yes, I mean everything I'm talking about works for musicians. You need to learn e-com. You sell merch. You sell tickets. Musicians make money in merch, 
and touring. Those are two things. Merch and touring. So, you guess how you get good at that? Ecom. I'm friends with a guy, like one of the guys from 21 Pilots. They make their money in Ecom and touring. That merch and touring. So that's Ecom. They use social media to reach people. So you learn social media. Where do you invest your profits? Real estate's a great place to invest profits. How do you get money when you don't have money? <clears throat> you have to understand credit and building cash. So, or building an investor base. Share a story, okay. IG's done. Best personality test, probably Hexaco score. Uh, if you go to tylopez.com slash quiz, I made a free quiz. It's probably the best one out there. I didn't make it, sadly. Um, I wasn't smart enough, but it's a combination of like the five best personality, most scientifically validated. So it's got MPI, Mach 4, Hexaco, Big Five. Um, you wanna go on IG again? No. Okay. No, we'll no more. Ty, where's the social consulting course? That's, that's closed now. Ty, check out Jiu-Jitsu recovery rules. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Ty, will you make a beat with me? Ha <laughs> ha. How do I do M&A with no experience? You need to collaborate with somebody else doing M&A. Look, there's nothing wrong in life with starting out as an intern or an assistant to somebody. To learn that's what I did I did grunt farm work man I carried two tons of water every morning to water chickens to learn from my mentor Joel Salkin so I could get some time with him do you like any other instruments besides the piano sure Ty people say everyone has a gaping hole in their chest metaphorically how do you fill that gap happiness is a complex thing all I can tell you is if you go down this, what I'm talking about, my core values, health, wealth, love, happiness, trying to pull those four together, you'll be so busy in life, <laughs> a lot of problems will go away. I don't agree with communism, but Karl Marx said one thing true, and that is that uh, people have too much spare time in their hands, neurosis is created out of thin air. <laughs> you gotta be able to, yeah, some people are so neurotic, you give them any spare time, and they're like, ah, oh, what do I do in my spare time? Could you add funnel agency program? It's not in there now. You should invest in a pro sports team. Actually, believe it or not, I may have that in the works. What's better than drop shipping? Brand, owning e-com brands is better than drop shipping. Drop shipping is a start, but not an end. It's like being a realtor. People ask me, my advice to realtors is it's a start, it's not a finish. You finish as a real estate investor if you know how to find and value real estate properties why wouldn't you be start buying them yourself the best tool for managing social media i don't use a lot of the tools i've used buffer before there's people who use all these social tools and yeah, to schedule their stuff i'm not such a fan why are you slurring am i slurring i don't think so people like to say that <laughs> of donald trump it's not just like okay people are like that's not okay <laughs> What course would you recommend doing first? I would probably do e-com, social media. I would, I don't know, flip a coin. Whichever one you're the weakest at. Time's up. Barku Incon. Thank you, Barku, for updating me that I was past my time. So, good night. Mylobis.com slash Black Friday 4. Save a couple grand. Go into 2020 like a banshee. Change your life, change the world. All right, good night.